So in this week's vlog, we've got a special treat. We're going to the Cheeky Cauldron, a Harry Potter themed restaurant and cafe. You won't believe what's inside. Thanks for being here. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Give it a thumbs up at the end if you think you like it. So I'm glad you're here. Let's go on in. Now, before we go into the cafe, I want to let you know I, I do know about Harry Potter. I've seen all the movies. Here is a photo I took when I took my granddaughter to London. We went to Leadenhall Market where Hagrid took Harry when they first arrived in London. And then we went to the door that you go through to get to the Leaky Cauldron not the Cheeky Cauldron, Leaky Cauldron, to get to Diagon Alley. And then later, we went to King's Cross uh, Station uh, to Platform 9 and 3 quarters and to the Harry Potter uh, shop there. So, go ahead and tell us who you are. I am Raven Moon, and I am one of the co-owners of the Cheeky Cauldron. And what prompted you guys to start this? A very big obsession with the world of Harry Potter. And how old were you when you first discovered Harry? How old was I? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was... Were you a child? I was 14, uh -huh. and I was making fun of my best friend for liking it. And then? And then I picked on her enough to where she threw a book at me and said, if you read this, you can make fun of me till the cows come home. But if not, you have to stop. And so I read the first book in about two days. And then I read the second book in about one. And then the third book I had to steal from her <laughs> while she was asleep. And the rest is history. Like, So you... you how do you see the the films different from the books i would say that's a good way i would say think of like your favorite sweet drink and then have the diet version the movies are very very close but it's not quite the same okay what how did you meet your business partner we met on a neighborhood um, community group on Facebook and we had just been bantering back and forth for so long so then our bantering became a oh well, we're just going to be best friends and then finally we did meet and we share a brain we have everything in common in a very bizarre way like we finish each other's sentences we have zero arguments we always agree on everything like it's crazy like to say you always agree that's a pretty big thing to say it is pretty Although there are people that, that basically that happens with. Uh -huh. um, so what prompted you to start the the rest, the, the, the Cheeky Cauldron? There are so many layers to that. So what prompted me myself was not wanting to work for anybody else. She and I both have um, health issues. And so that working at somebody else's pace and not wanting to let somebody else down was really hard for me and so um being able to do sure. our own and be our own boss and if our schedule needed to vary a little bit it was a lot easier to do to ourselves than... and did it make did it just fall into place that it was harry a harry potter theme or you know we were watching harry potter while discussing um things that made us excited to go to places and Harry Potter obviously was on our mind right then and we both have just loved it forever and we knew we couldn't be alone for us to be grown women wanting to go to Universal and hang out or like why not so have you been to any hair other Harry Potter themed areas I went to a bar like in Southeast Portland um, because I had looked up Harry Potter themed places because that's what my intentions were. And there was a bar about an hour for me and I drove to it and opened the door and it wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. So I didn't even go inside. Like it, it was, it was not what I wanted it to be. How, when did you start it? 
We started planning um, everything. It was April of last year. Of last year? Mm -hmm. How did the pandemic impact you? Well, we wouldn't have been home watching Harry Potter together if the pandemic wasn't a thing. So I definitely say it played a pretty big role. Um, so yeah, no, with, that's one thing that's a blessing and a curse is that it gave so many people free time to be able to be around one another by being able to spend more time with friends and family and meeting up because you didn't have a commitment to go to work anymore because everything had stuck down. So you found a storefront. Yeah, um, this was one of the very first places we looked at and when we walked into the kitchen there was a uh, we call the slate board with the group. Anyway, instead of having the baskets and the slate board, and each little group was um, fortunes from a fortune cookie. And I thought that was so quirky, and I was like, you know what, this is it. Uh, but that was uh, pretty great. There must have been a period where you, you got the place, uh -huh. and then it was like, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this and that? It wasn't even what because we have i mean i can tell you ideas all day long for what i would still do with this with more time sure, money. sure. um but no our ideas just build off of each other it's like well what about this and what about that Good. no it, it was very it was hard to narrow it down what we wanted to do it must be quite heartening to have a business partner that is so in tune where, where the two of you are so in tune Absolutely. No, that's been very fun. And we've actually had to start holding each other back a little bit because I wanted a uh, life-size um, dragon in the outside area. So. I read that somewhere. We'll get there. Uh, I read that, you'd, that uh, you guys would like to find a little larger place. Yes. Oh, my goodness. If we had known it would be this busy... I mean, we could triple the size and still be full. Are there lines that go outside during the real busy season? Um, after the Oregonian did that one uh, thing on us, the line went all the way down the block that week. And that was that went from having like a slow couple of customers at a time to completely full from open to close. And we didn't stop that weekend and it was just with us and the best kind of So where do you go from here? From here, we are definitely looking at uh, bigger places and looking for maybe purchasing instead of leasing uh, property so that we can get and do a lot more there. Um, we definitely want to branch out in a few different ways, and we have an announcement coming out here in a couple of weeks. Um, Lastly, tell us a little about your potions classes. Oh my goodness, so the potion classes are so cute to be a part of, and that's, I mean, we're having people that are enjoying themselves that are as young as five and up, like everybody. We have a very big range of customers come for that, and so it's $50 a person. You get a witch hat, some glasses, a wand pencil, a drink, and a $10 gift card, as well as the potion that you get to create yourself. You choose a bottle, you choose the color, you choose what it turns into, um, you choose the name and the label and all the things, and it's a lot of fun. Well, the Tedicated Tribe thanks you for taking this time to talk to us. Yeah, not a problem. So now I'm trying one of the premier drinks here at the Cheeky Cauldron. A butter brew latte. Let's see how it tastes. Coffee, slightly sweet, with a hint of Ravenclaw brew. Very delicious. And now, just arrived, was one of the premier sweets here. And they're called pumpkin pastries, pastries, whatever.
Okay, let's see how they taste. Ooh, they're fresh and warm, just right out of the oven. Very good, very good. Sweet, pumpkin-y, and the outer layer is quite flaky. So that's the end of this week's vlog. I hope you liked it here at the Cheeky Cauldron. If you made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you subscribed, and we'll see you next week.